this word in my spirit for quite a few weeks now. God allow me to talk to you about it's complicated. And I went to Jamaica to work on our radio there in Kingston and it's been bubbling in my spirit. And as I came back here to the States, I hear the Lord said to tell me to tell you it's complicated, but God sent me here today to uncomplicate some complicated st things that you're dealing with in your life. Come on, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's complicated. <laughs> I can't explain it to you. It's just, it just, it's just complicated. Anybody here in the sanctuary today have been through some complicated situation? Anybody? You haven't been through anything. Don't say nothing to me. Don't say nothing to me. Then don't say nothing to me. Or you don't want your neighbor to know that you've been through some complicated situation. That if you were not careful, you lose your mind, you lose your heart, you lose your peace, you lose your sanity, you lose out on so many things. And sometimes we try to explain to our friends and our families and our siblings. How complicated what you're dealing with really is. And sometimes they don't get it. Eh? They have to see a band-aid to get the comprehension of how complicated it is. You, you, you see somebody driving down the street or walking down the street. And you think that you have a world of problems until they open their mouth and begin to explain to you how complicated their situation is. Somebody shout, it's complicated. Talk to me, man. It's complicated. But I believe that God gave me a word today to uncomplicate your complication. Uh, I'm in the wrong place today. I don't believe that I'm in the right church today because you're not talking to me today. Complicated, man. Come on, somebody say complicated. How complicated is it for you? The believers will always have complicated tests and challenge. Christians will always have complication. If your life is not complicated in different seasons of your life, you are the enemy of complication as friend. But if you and the enemy of complications is not friends, then I challenge you today that the believers will have complicated tests, trials. And if he's not complicating you, you got to ask yourself the question, what's up? I am not suggesting that it's going to be complicated in all seasons of your life. But there are going to be some complicated seasons. And that's when the enemy is doing his job. And you're sending a message to the enemy that you also is doing what? Doing your job. Sometimes it's complicated. Go to my bed complicated. Anybody can relate to that? can't sleep in the night it's complicated have air conditioning in the house and it should be cold but it's hot it's complicated try to shut my eyes and i can't sleep because it's complicated and the question is if you're dealing with so much complication where is god <laughs> and sometimes many of you will think within yourself and say even god is complicated what you're dealing with is complicated. But I believe that we serve a Jesus that aren't complicate complication. Can I get a witness, somebody? God's word said he will never give you more than you can handle or more than you can deal with. And somebody may be wondering today, what kind of complication are you alluding to? What kind of complication are you talking about? Put your name there. Some people are dealing with complicated health challenges. Nobody's not talking to me today. I'm wearing a, a, a band over my knee. I came back from Jamaica. Good, good. And now I lost my voice. Yesterday I was in bed all day. I didn't come out of bed. It was complicated, man. 
And while I'm there dealing with my complication, I heard my brother have the same thing like me. It's complicated, Deacon. And if you're not dealing with health complication, you're dealing with financial complication. Talk to me, church. Are you, I'm in the wrong place today. And if you're not dealing with finances, you're not dealing with financial complication, there may be a sibling complication. You want me to spell it out for you or you get it? You, uh, Bishop, hey, I'm dealing with my own share. And it's complicated. But when it's complicated, ladies and gentlemen, is when we go to the source above all source. We go to the strength above all strength. We go to the hope above all hope. Come on, we go for the solution. Oh my God, he has a name. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. He knows how to uncomplicate your health problem. He knows how to uncomplicate your finance problem. So it's okay to be complicated. But it's even better when you're coming out of your complication. Somebody shout at me, it's complicated, Bishop. No, man, you're not talking to me. It's complicated. Do you need to see proof that it's complicated? Judges chapter 6, we'll be reading verse 12. And we'll be reading verse 15. Every person that I read about in the 66 books in the Bible, I've had their shares of complication. Anybody here with me today? <laughs> Let's go to the book of Judges, the 6th chapter. We'll be looking at verse 12. And we'll be looking at verse 15. Praise God. And when you find it, say amen. It should be on the screen as well. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, Gideon, and said unto Gideon, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Let's go down to the 15th verse. And he said unto him, Gideon, O oh my Lord, where shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is the poorest of Manasseh amongst the tribe, and I am the least of my father's house. May God bless the reading of the word, and we honor it by saying glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody bless the Lord in this place. Come on, somebody bless the Lord in this place. Somebody bless the Lord in this place. Amen. I would like to take you today on a journey to look at a man by the name of Gideon. And in this passage of scripture, we're going to be looking at a man by the name of Gideon. Gideon was raised in a religious setting in a religious home, in a religious environment. Gideon went to school. He learned the golden rules. Gideon grew up in life and he chose a career. He start from the bottom and he worked his way all the way to the top, like many of us. But here is Gideon in a position of a general. Talk to me, somebody say, general. It takes a lot of hard work to become a general. Hello, somebody. And it's twice as hard to become a general in the army of Israel. Are you following me? Now, Gideon became a general in the army of God. But now they're at the battlefront and they're fighting. And while they're fighting, Gideon has been told that Israel is losing. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Gideon represents the army of God. And the message came to the general of God. Deacon, that they are losing the battle. Have you ever lost anything in your life? Have you ever lost anything in your life? Have you ever prayed for something and you get there and you're so close to touch it and you lost it? Have you ever lose anything in your life? Nobody here have never lost anything. And Gideon, General Gideon was there and he was fighting. And more and more message keep coming to the man 
saying your army is losing somebody say complicated it's complicated say it like you believe it and the message came to Gideon general Gideon to say your army is losing your army is not winning your army should be winning because God is the author of your army but your army is losing have you ever said sometimes and you wonder the world is getting by and the world is going along and they're, they're, they're stable they're blessed and the Joneses are fine but it seems like you are struggling so Gideon was there and he was told over and over every message that he is losing no matter what he does, no matter what strategies he utilizes, he was told over and over, he's losing. He's losing everything. He's losing the battle. Just like many of us today, we're losing in so many areas of our life. We're losing if it's not our health, it's wealth. If it's not wealth, it's something else. You feel as if you're trying hard, but, but you keep losing. You lose a car, you lose this, you lose that. And you get up and you keep trying and you, it feels as if you are still losing. It's a bad thing when you're losing to believe that you become a loser. But even though Gideon was a general, Gideon had some unresolved problem that he's dealing with. Talk to me. Somebody said it's complicated. I can't hear you. It's complicated. Can't hear you. Complicated. So Gideon now has been told over and over, your army is being defeated. It's almost like God is for his enemy rather than God is for him. This is where many folks begin to wonder and examine yourself and say, what am I doing wrong? How can I be doing everything right and I am still losing? Every report that he receives is that he is losing the battle. But while Gideon was there, I believe many of us can relate to this because if you're not careful, it got, you got to a place where, where you feel as if you're stuck. Last year, this time, I was here. The year before that, I was here. And when you look outside and see the military forces is, is losing, now all of a sudden if you're not careful, if you don't have power and strength and courage and boldness inside of you, when you look at everything that you're looking at, you see failures. Everything that you heard, you heard negativity. If you're not careful and you don't look way down inside of you to, to 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 empower you to encourage you yourself to motivate yourself you will begin to accept what you've been told how many of you know that if god be for you who can be against you no honey you're not talking to me today how many of you know if god fight your battles who can fight against you if god said you're gonna win you can't lose if god say yes there is no no if god said it's today you can't put it off even though it look contrary and it seems as if i am losing i, I want to teach you this because this is important the military forces that are bringing the news to gideon they were not at the same place as gideon you must be careful who is bringing you news. You must be careful what you're hearing in your ear gate. Because the impression of others that are bringing you contrary news and where God have you and where God is taking you, you got to be careful. Come on, somebody. No, you're not talking to me today. When you get it, I'll move on. The enemy can use anyone and everyone to bring you contrary news to what God is saying. If God give you a word, it must come to pass. If God say you're going to win, you just can't lose. 
but there are those who are bringing you contrary things in your ear gate. And, and, and the enemy will make sure you're seeing contrary things to the point where you get to the point where you decide, I already lost. Somebody said the devil is a liar. Talk to me. And so if you're not careful and to have the wrong, you, you, your enemy could be fighting off your soldiers over there. But if you have the right standing with Jesus Christ and you begin to declare some things out of your mouth, even though it looked like they're dying, but I speak life. Even though it looked impossible, but I'm speaking possibilities. Even though it looked like black, but I'm speaking white. Even though it looked like it ain't going to change, but I'm speaking changes. I can't, I can't hear you today. Even though, even though it seems like the enemy is winning. But the problem with Gideon, which most of you will identify, is not necessarily that those that was bringing negativity to him. You need to find the right people this year. You need to find the right people in your life this month. Going into a new year or going into a new month. You need to find the right people with the right mindset in your life, in your circles that can bring you the right news. Can I get a witness somebody? That can bring you the right news and not the contrary news. And even if you receive contrary news, you got to position your mind and yourself so even though it seems that way, it's an appearance. But it's not what it is. Because what I'm believing God for, when I came to this battlefront, God told me I'm going to win. Even though all signs are saying I'm, going, I'm losing. I'm losing and I'm going to win are two different things. Where do you stand? Where do you draw the line? Are you losing? Are you still believing that you're winning even though your armies are falling off like leaves? Hello, somebody. Somebody said it's complicated. Can't hear you, man. It's complicated. It's complicated because the proof say you're losing, but something inside of you that comes from God said, no, I'll go win this one. But the problem with Gideon, I'm going to tell you what the problem is with Gideon. You may be losing today in your relationship. You may be losing today by the way how you feel. You may be losing some things that you're fighting and you've been fighting it for a long time. What's in you will come out of you under pressure. I say it again. What's in you will come out of you under pressure. Somebody said this is complicated. But I'm going to uncomplicate this complication in a minute. That's all right. Amen. Now, 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 when Gideon keep hearing the report that he is losing. If you're not godly, you start falling asleep or run away. Because everything you're hearing is negative. How do you find strength when the proof said otherwise? How do you find courage when the proof said otherwise? How do you get from where the armies and the people who are dying, who are saying that there would be no hope? How do you find hope as a general? First of all, you got to dig deep down on the inside of you. What's in you will appreciate negativity or plead the blood of Jesus Christ on negativity. There are certain things you don't allow to come upon you. You see, Gideon was dealing with some low self-worth. I'm taking you somewhere. Gideon, he was losing the battle because he didn't believe. Hello, somebody. He didn't believe that he can win. He didn't believe that he can succeed. He didn't believe that. Brethren, listen to me and listen to me good. If you don't believe that you are the one and you don't believe that you are capable, you will never succeed. If you believe that, that you're salt, you're bad luck, and, and, and only bad things happen to you and nothing good ever happened to you, you already defeat yourself. But this general that, that name, by the name of Gideon, he was already defeated because he defeated himself. I can push you, I can pump you, I can encourage you, I can empower you, I can motivate you. But the question is, can you motivate yourself? Can you encourage yourself? 
Can you do that? So Gideon, he's there as a general leading a big army, but he was already defeated. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> I should tell you. I should tell you. Let's go to verse 15. Let's look at verse 15. And then we come back to verse 12. And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is the poorest amongst the twelve tribes. And I am the least in my father's house. Now this is a man with a very low self-worth. First of all, he compared the twelve tribes of Israel. And when he began to look at Israel, he looked at Israel from the perspective that he's from the worst tribe. I'm from the worst community. I'm black. I'm too short. I don't speak properly. I didn't get the right education. I don't come from no wealthy family. My life is going to be the same. I will never amount to be nothing good in life. Because I am the least of my community. You see the lie? Hello somebody. Imagine God placed you to be a, a, a general in the army. And, 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 and God is saying you're going to win. But instead of him accepting it that he's going to win. He begins to describe why he's not qualified to win. Hello somebody. Are you with me today church? Are you feeling me? He begins to describe why he is not qualified to win. But God said you're going to win. You're going to win. So we got to deal with these low self-worth on the inside of us that's stopping us from being the benefactor of what God is doing for us and what God wants to do for us. He was fighting a battle on the inside of him. He said he was the least, he came from the least tribe and he was the least amongst his brethren. What kind of mindset is this? This is someone who's already defeated. Someone who already make up their mind that they will never win. Someone who made up their mind my life will stay the same. Nobody can stop you but you. Come on, say that with me. Nobody can stop me but me. So God Almighty is speaking to him and said, Listen Gideon, you are going to be the savior today. You are going to win in this season. Your marriage is going to change. Your relationship is going to change. Your body is going to get healed. Your army will be winning today. This is your day. You are at the forefront. You are going to get victory. You ought to see that. You have to believe that. You got to stand on that. I am sent from God to tell you that. And he's there saying, I am the least. Can you imagine God sent an angel to talk to you that is your season? This is the best day of your life. Huh? Your breakthrough is just around the corner. And you there murmuring and complaining. You having a pity party when you're getting a direct message. From the king of kings. And the lord of lords telling you. You're going to save millions of people. And you're going to save a nation. You're going to change their history. They're going to be better tomorrow. God is talking to this man. And feeding this man. And he's talking back to God. Negativity after negativity after negativity. I'm from Jamaica. I am the least uh, likely person in my family. I am the black sheep of the family. You don't know what I've been through. I've been through hell. I didn't have bullet cake to go to school. Sometimes I gotta walk to school barefooted. What you talking about telling me that I'm gonna be the Prime Minister of the United States of America? What are you telling me that good things is going to happen to me? You don't know where I came from. I walked 20 miles to school and sometimes I went to school without food. You don't understand my mama did and my daddy this I I'm in the wrong church today <laughs> you're gonna win Gideon huh you're gonna win and Gideon is saying it's complicated <laughs> can you imagine God sent an angel to tell the man, get ready. Make up your mind. Next week, this time, it's your season. 
you will experience what your mother never had. You will experience what your daddy never had. You will experience what your family never had. God will take you further than nobody in your bloodline before you never got there. Nobody before you have ever seen what I am going to do for you. Get your heart right. Get your mind right. Get, 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 get. You go in. Even though it looked funny. Even though it seems sunny. Get the mindset of a champion. And get and get here and sit there. Hello. He's sitting on the word. Let me ask you a question. If you get a word like that, what would you do? I can't hear you. You're sick and God has given you a word, you're gonna heal. You're poor and God says you're rich. God Almighty, what you waiting on? Sitting there saying it's complicated, God. <laughs> God is saying it's your season, and you sit there. When will it be? Hello, God said you're gonna save the nation. All you gotta do, Larry, is to get up and say, Yes, praise God. I'm getting ready. My whole family is ready. We're gonna pop the wagon. We're gonna pop the truck. Oh God, I'm getting ready to move. Because God said it's my season to move. God say yes. That's all I need. When God say yes, I'm going. So he, he sit there. Look what he says. God said, look, look here, look here, Gideon. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you're going to save Israel. You cannot allow your today's disappointments to distract you from who you are. You cannot allow your today's problem to dictate to you that your tomorrow will never be better. You cannot allow what you're looking at to dictate to you it will remain like that 